now. Hey, it's Michael Aller, and I have a new plugin for you, sort of. Now, are you tired of making UMG stuff slowly? You want to make UMG stuff faster and a bit more programmatically? I have a code base for you. Now, currently, this only works on the, the master or the promoted branch and some other stuff, but uh, it does work. Uh, maybe we'll get around to releasing it when 4.7 is stable. I'll make a pa uh, packaged plugin for that, so um, you can have it for that. I'm not going to do it for 4.6 because simply it just doesn't work for 4.6. So uh, you could retrofit it to do that, but it's not worth it. So on to this thing now. What this plugin does is it simplifies a lot of things. I'll just show you an example of a menu you can create pretty quickly with it, kind of quickly. There's some, yeah, whatever. So here's a title screen, and you just hit enter, and uh, it loads this. Nothing important there, but as here, we got some stuff here. We got a, uh, let's actually, let me make this a little bit bigger by adding some side stuff onto it. I think that will zoom in a bit more. No, it'll just, the UI scales like that, okay. Probably because I have all this horizontal space. Let's drag this down. There we go. That's better. So, example menu. What well, this just looks like some buttons and some sliders, right? Well, it's a little bit more than that. These are all data bound and whatnot, so uh, I can change the color of the sentence. Basically, the top here is a fruit sentence generator. You choose what fruit color you want, how many fruit you want, and what kind of fruit. And uh, here's where it gets things get exciting. If you click the log button. You get a message box that pops up saying, are you sure you want to store this many bananas? And you hit yes, and you get a table list here. And if you click it, it goes away. And uh show you an example of what's going on here. Let's add some fruit. Boom. Boom. So what we see here is we have a dynamic, I get what I call a table view on the right here. But you can add items dynamically, and it will scroll if there's too many, if it's too big. And you can set this up to have any number of columns and have your data have any number of data things. You can set up styles for alternate rows. Um, you can click things to delete, or you can do whatever you want. Currently, there's no support for selecting an item in a sense because UMG doesn't have really too much control over the hovered state or anything like that yet. But I'm working on that. So. Uh, and here we have a widget switcher. It's kind of like the built-in widget switcher, but it's a little different. And I'll show you how that's about. And uh, yeah, this is what I'll be demoing how to create. I know it's not very much, but uh, you can think of these things as like this is a server list. Uh, this is some sort of like options menu or something. You can use this message box system for really any time you need a message box. Uh, whether you want to act on whether the user hits yes or no, the user can't do anything else when they're in this message box, uh, all sorts of things. And also these bu these buttons are the way they're set up. I think you'll like it. So moving on to uh, how do you create something like this with this plugin. Let me go ahead and open up a brand new project. This is completely empty project here, and but the plugin is installed. And the plugin you can see here is a UMGX plugin content. Now there's a bunch of example widgets which have everything you need to make this. Uh, and in fact, it includes this widget, but we'll get into that later. That all comes with the plugin. But we're going to make that mini from scratch live on Twitch. But this is meant for YouTube. So if you're on Twitch wondering why I'm talking like this, it's because I'm filming it for YouTube. If you're on YouTube, Wondering why I'm doing it live and things are breaking. It's because I'm doing it live for Twitch. All right, let's just do it. So the first thing you want to do is kind of create a menu level, I guess. Uh, you don't really do it. You can make any level you want. I just want to save this as just menu. So here's our menu level. Nothing special. And let's go ahead and go to our content browser and to our widgets list. First thing we're going to need, uh, let's just do a title screen. So easiest thing to do is go to user interface, widget blueprint, and I'm going to call this demo underscore title screen. Simple enough. And if you double click this, you get the UMG editor. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Probably seen all this before. But first thing I'm going to do is the plugin has a base class called title widget, which gives you some uh, 
some little things that are kind of nice. Let's go to title screen, title screen widget. And what title screen widget does is, uh, let me open this up in code so you can see some of it. It basically allows you to handle online subsystem login stuff. So say you have a, you're, you're deploying this to a console or something, or you're deploying this to some on, certain online subsystem and you hit, uh, like when the game says press enter to continue or press X to continue and you're not logged in or you don't own the game, at that point, uh, the UI will automatically do a check to see, hey, you don't own the game, or hey, you need to log into Xbox Live, or whatever. Uh, that doesn't really do much on PC, but that functionality is in the plugin, so you don't have to worry about that if you were to do that. So let's just design our title screen right now. And I'm just going to add in a text box. Boom. Make this size something like, I don't know, the specifics of this don't really matter. You can do whatever you want here. Demo title screen. We'll anchor this to the center. Stretch it out. I'm going to be too precise with laying these out for this demo here, but uh, demo title screen. Sweet. And let's add something here. Something like press enter to continue. And this string you can format to be like press X to continue or whatever on consoles or if you're on mobile, tap to continue, whatever you kind of want. It's not really important um, in that regard. So yeah, now after this we need to wire up a few things. Some of these uh, widgets require a little bit of setup. And excuse me, I'm just pulling up some uh, some stuff right now. And so the, what the title screen doesn't do currently is it doesn't handle input automatically, which is something that will happen in the future. But for now, if you want to have this advance to the next screen, the easiest way to do that is to add a key event such as on, oh, this doesn't do key events, that's right. In UMG, you have to override on key down. And this gets called anytime you press a key down when the widget has focus. So. The in key event contains the key if we run get key. Tie this to here and we can check to see if this is the enter button or really if you wanted to, you can make this a press any key by just any time this event is fired, move to the next screen. It doesn't really matter too much. But I like to press enter because that's just what I like to do. So wire this up. And the first thing we want to do on get enter is to remove ourselves from the viewport so that the title screen goes away. Remove from parent. This should do it. And uh, yeah, that should do it. Uh, actually, no, oh, my bad. Uh, there is a, what is it? So, the title screen widget has something called advanced to main menu. We call this to tell the uh, the plugin that don't worry about any platform stuff and everything is good. Because you would do all your login checks right here. My bad. Advanced to main menu has, is a default thing. So anytime the game advances to the main menu, say if it's an automatic thing like the game resets but you don't want to see the title screen or say you just disconnected from a game or you got you signed out of Xbox Live, this will kind of already automatically be called this advanced domain menu function so you don't have to press enter again that type of thing and when you return you always want to return handled because uh, you just you're handling every key press so to say so that way your key presses don't get sent to the engine now in your event graph you have to add an event here called advanced domain menu advanced domain menu yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that will handle some platform login stuff for you for this. So it's a little intuitive at first, but it kind of fits. And it's the only kind of weird thing about this plugin in terms of undocumented stuff. So we're getting it out of the way first. So with advanced domain menu, it's pretty simple. We want to remove ourselves from the viewport. And the reason why this isn't hard coded is sometimes you might prefer to have the title screen as a separate panel and like a panel switching thing instead of having the title screen advance to the main menu you want to switch to another widget so this gives you the freedom to kind of do whatever you want sometimes you want to play an animation you can override this to play an animation as well uh, 
a lot of reasons why it's done this way and not hard coded. So next thing we need to do is we need to create our next menu widget, which we don't have yet. So I'll just leave this blank. And we need to feed it an owning player because UMG widgets require a player to own it or a world object. And so you just get, get owning player in here. And this is all standard UMG stuff right here. Nothing too special here, other than the fact that this runs off the advanced main menu. I'll go ahead and put in an example class for now, but we'll change it to their own menu, which we'll create right now. So here's our title screen. Now to get this to show, we need to tell our level to show it, really. You can either do this in your player controller, or there are many numerous ways to do it, but for this demo, I'm going to run a, just run a blueprint in the example or in this level here, we get a level blueprint. Uh, am I? No, let's do it the right way. Sorry, I'm not holding. Again, doing it live. So, most likely you're gonna have a player controller of some sort. And generally it's a good idea to have one for your menu class, so to say, your menu game because that allows you to do specific menu stuff such as connect to servers and whatnot. So what I want to do here is I want to create a new folder called Blueprints. And I want to create two Blueprints. I want to create a game mode. I'm going to call this demo game mode underscore menu. And I want to create a Blueprint for your player controller. Demo PC menu. And so this is just a game mode that will we're in the menu. It's really not too much. Why is it asking me for what menu to use? Over our game mode, demo game mode menu. There we go. And in our game mode, we can set the defaults. I'm still navigating this new blueprint UI. Class defaults. Here we go. Class defaults, player controller, demo PC menu. So this will use our player controller menu. And again, you probably have something like this already set up in your game already. But again, this is a brand new project, so setting that up. So on, when the player controller is started, so begin play, what we're going to do is we're going to create a widget here. Boom. And this will just load up your title screen. And then for the owning player, you can get a reference to self. And I'll hook you up right there. So here's your title screen. And that should be all you need. Oh, nope, you need to add to viewport. Vital step that I commonly miss. And now when you hit play, your, your title screen should show up. Now if your text is misaligned like mine here, where it press enter to continue is very, very tiny, then uh, that's an issue with your alignment. So I wanna align this anchor to the center here. And I want to make it a bit bigger. So, so here's our title screen. Pretty simple. Um, now, as you notice, I can still move around in the viewport. So that's a bit of a problem. So our player controller needs to tell the game to, hey, don't input to the game, input to the UI. And luckily, Epic has a provided mode for us, set input mode UI only. And then you can tell it to focus on the the title screen. And the target is usually self. Usually don't need to plug that in, but plug it in anyway. Just to make sure. Hit play. Now our mouse doesn't move the viewport or anything. And if we hit enter, nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? On key down, if enter, that's the main menu. So this is where we debug. Tap breakpoint. All right, we are not getting any input whatsoever. So this probably means this widget is not getting focused. One cheap and easy way to do this is to make the canvas panel visible instead of self-hit test. Usually when you do that, 
it grabs every piece of input possible. There we go. So title screens, make sure you have your root canvas panel as visible. Otherwise it won't receive input unless you have something else clicked in it. So play. And this is the example mini from earlier, but we're gonna go ahead and make our own and walk through that. Ah. So let's go ahead and make our own example menu like we saw before. So let's go to, well, let's save our title screen first. And user interface, widget blueprints, and we'll call this demo menu. Now, first thing I want to do with this menu here is set it up to be a child of what's called a full panel widget. This is where we start getting into the plugin stuff. A full panel widget is a panel widget that allows it to be switched uh, with something that's very similar to the panel switcher that Epic provides, but it uses my version, which allows you to do things like switching panels by name instead of by index. And once that's set up, then in your menu or in your title screen, we can now set it up so that when you advance to the main menu, you use your new menu. So set demo menu. And now when I play advanced, you'll see it goes nowhere because our menu has nothing in it. So again, for this example, I'm going to add a, uh, the stuff what we saw in the earlier demo. And the first thing is just a black background. So I'm gonna add a image, set to anchor on all points, set all the offsets to zero, and make the Z order negative one so that everything gets laid on top of it. And then I'm gonna name it background. We never use this uh, for interactivity, so we're going to hit is variable false. And then I'm going to hide it in the hierarchy so we don't ever have to click it and deal with it. And again, you can see that if we go to the menu now, our screen turns black. Everything's working. Hey, knock mock dev. Knock mock. I cannot ever see your name. Recording a YouTube video at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're doing it live anyway, so yeah. So with this menu here, let's go ahead and add our example menu text demo menu do, 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 do. set this up we can center it ghetto it ghetto center it that looks centered so one of the really cool things that is actually the first reason why I built this plugin was I use a lot of navigation in my menus. I use a lot of buttons and I got tired of manually placing and aligning buttons that I just need like five in a row or something. And I didn't want to place five buttons in a row. I should be able to just tell code, hey, make five buttons in a row and then do stuff with them. And if you do that in UMG, it gets all messy with all these different events and functions and each button has its own event handler. And I just wanted to do it very simple. So. With the plugin, there is a widget called the example widget list. Now, each of these example base widgets you can customize and skin and theme out, and we'll, we'll cover that later. But the example widget list is simply a, a container that holds other widgets that are made by code. So you won't be able to see the widgets interactively in the editor, but they will show up at runtime. And so I want to position this here. And let me pull up uh, something I did earlier. Do, 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 do. So again, with the example widgets, there's a few things going on here. You'll see here on the right, there are four classes here. The button class, the label button class, the slider class, and the radio uh, scroller class. And those are basically different widgets that, again, the plugin provides. And if you swap out the class here, the widget list will use those for populating itself. And I'm going to set this to, I'm going to set my widget list to be a size of 256. Whoa, how did I get that number? And because the default buttons are 256 in width, and I want to have three buttons here for three different types of fruit I want to be setting up. So when you click the fruit stuff, again, I'll show you what I mean in the example menu here. Um, let me move this over. Again, we're recreating this menu here where you click these buttons and things happen. The first thing is these apples, oranges, bananas button here. And to add these buttons to this widget list, 
in the info list you click plus and the UI for this is a little weird I still have to figure out how to customize the editor a bit and set that up but I'll figure that out someday maybe you guys can help contribute it I don't know and this is a button that I'm adding so I'm going to check the button box and then the button info becomes enabled and then for this I'll just call this apple I'll give it the label of apples and I'll give it a tag of apples now the tag system is really what this plugin is all about every widget has a label and tag associated with it if you use one from the UMGX plugin widget library and tags allow you to select widgets to find widgets to create widgets to control widgets dynamically through code instead of relying on hard references that way if you create a widget as long as you know the tag of that widget you can get it from anywhere essentially so let's add two more buttons here I'm going to add a bananas button. Bananas. I can never spell bananas right. Bananas. And then I will add an oranges button. Oranges. Now, so again, I filled out three buttons labels and tags. That's it. I didn't add or drag anything in here. I want to call this widget fruit list. Or fruit, yeah, fruit list. To compile and as again you can't see any buttons here but if I load this up now you'll see that I have three buttons already made and they're clickable they don't do anything yet but they do click and they do generate and they have all their hover states and they have style properties that you can override and hey three buttons and these will always be evenly spaced these will always be this size uh, unless it's scaled up or down based on your viewport and you won't have to worry about ever manually placing three buttons in a row again now this has support for vertical or for horizontal buttons as well so if I drag this out here and I switch this to a horizontal widget which is set here so there's an is vertical checkbox you can set turn this off boom and now the widgets will line up horizontally so all automatic don't have to worry about that stuff makes laying out new widgets easy and exciting and fun and whatever cool but let's just bring this back down to 256 and get vertical again. Now, I also want to have three different options for what color of fruit, how many fruits, and I want a button that will like store this information into a table view. So to do that, I want to drag another widget list. And uh, again, widget lists are pr the primary like reason why this plugin exists because it, they're just pretty damn awesome and this widget list is going to have some longer elements in it I sized my widgets to be about 600 earlier and again do have that reference I'm playing off of but I'm not going to stick to it too much so I have I know I want three things in here so I'm just going to make this a size of 150 because 48 times 3 is somewhere around 150. It's like 146 or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, 144? Doesn't matter. It'll all fit anyway. As long as the container widget list is bigger than the child, children, it'll be fine. And you can also set up children spacing in here and whatnot as well. So in here, I want to have a basically a radio selection, a set of choices, and I want to be able to navigate between them and you can do that with what's called a radial scroller widget I didn't really know what to call it but it's like a radial group and it also scrolls through choices so radio scroller is what I called it and in here it's a little bit different but you get an array of choices you can set up so I want the first choice to be white with the tag of white and red now most of this stuff I'm setting up for a demo the labels and the tags are pretty much going to match but in some cases, they you don't want that to happen, especially if you have some very long user-friendly name and you're trying to reference it in code. You want to keep searching for that string. Also, one thing to note is all these label tags here are localized. They're f-texts. I haven't messed with the localization too much, but it does support localization. The tags are f-names, so they're used for speedy lookups of things, and they're not localized. So you can always rely on the tags of being what they are. The label, on the other hand, will possibly be localized and uh, by you in the future so you can't really search by that if you change it if your game runs in Spanish or something so 
yeah now so again I have four choices here white red green blue and this is all contained in this radio scroller widget and there's a thing on here that says trigger change of it on create I'll talk about that later but I'm setting that on for now and the label for this I want to be fruit color and the tag for this even though I'm not really using it in this sense I'll still put one in the way I'll call this fruit options and I will name this widget list fruit options because that's what it is fruit options and if I hit play or let me save all this first if I hit play go to my menu you'll see that my things are here but they're a little weird so first thing we should check is our child widget size I know that I want my widgets to be 600 in width and stacked vertically so I should set my child widget size to match and oops I hit compile code <laughs> wrong button let's play so now our widget fits in this box and this widget here is defined in the UMG explosion again you can make your own widgets to replace any of these and then swap them out with whatever you want but if you open up the base widget you'll see that this here is the base widget has a text label and has two buttons one for previous one for next uh, pretty straightforward and they're all they have some stuff bound into it to handle some internal stuff but you can dig through that it's all very straightforward and you can make your own with your own unique functionality and look and placement if you want like the previous button on the far left or whatever or you want it to turn blue you want it to sparkle doesn't matter you can swap your class out here and it'll just work so we have our fruit color radio scroller and I want to add a slider widget and the slider widget will just say how many fruit I want and one important thing about the slider widget is that it can take a normalized range or it can take a minimax like user friendly range and this one will take the user friendly range between 1 and 10 and I don't want 2.5 fruit in this slider. I want the slider to be treated as an integer. So if you hit this box that says treat value as int, any value you pull out of this will automatically be floored to whatever value is basically your float minus its fractional decimal part. Meaning if the slider was on 2.5, it would return 2, which is pretty helpful. And I want to label this amount of fruit. That might fit. And I'll tag this amount. And then I'm going to add one more button so we can log it, our current fruit selection in the table view. And this will just be called log. I'll compile and save this and hit play. And here we see that all three widgets are automatically made. They're automatically laid out uh, to their size, respective of however they are made for example here's the button widget button widgets usually this big but you, by overriding the child size it will stretch this and keep the text aligned and do everything as you'd expect it to do and the slider is fully functional uh, the choices iterate through the choices that you've set up uh, you can add choices dynamically in blueprint at any time you can remove choices um, you can read choices and whatnot there you go uh, Again, pretty straightforward. Again, there's no events bound to anything yet, but we'll do that after our menu is laid out. And then let's add a table view so that when you click log, it stores whatever fruit you have selected. Because why not? I want to move these things down, actually. Oh, that's right. Uh, UMG does not like multiple selecting and dragging things. Do, do, do. Can you control the order of the child? Uh, the order of the info list, um, for those on YouTube, not more dev, just ask, can you control the order of the child? Uh, you can by the array of the info list. The order that you initialize them here is the order that they will be created. Can you rearrange them? Not yet. I'm not sure how to add the up and down arrows to this type of setup that you see in other blueprint windows. But as soon as I learn how to do that, then you'll be able to like order them easier here. But currently, what I do is I just insert or duplicate or delete and reorder it that way. A bit tedious, but it is something that I would like to have addressed in the future for sure. It is easier ordering, but again, you can order it based on how you initialize it here. 
Now, I'll just drop those down. Now, a table view is another reason why this plugin exists because doing a table view without this plugin is kind of really hard <laughs> and very specific case. There's no such thing as like a list view in a sense here. When you have your uniform grid panel, but it requires a lot of work to manage multiple columns and things and and you can do it in slate, but it's just easier just to have a widget that you can do it automatically for you. So I'm gonna set this widget up and I don't necessarily need a lot of room for this. And this is gonna have two columns in it. So it's uh you'll see that there's a there's a heading row class and two rows of what are called table list rows which you can scan out and customize. So here's what a table list looks like. It's just a big button and a container on top for text, but you can theme this to be however you'd like. And where was that? And the alternate row is just a lighter color so it looks better in the table list because it's a common thing people need is to alternate between two different styles in their table views. And yeah, so uh, now we need to define our column headers. And to do that, you go to header row items. And I want the first row to be what kind of fruit you have selected. And I want the second header to be the amount. And the label and tag I'm not really using here because this isn't referenced anywhere. But again, every widget generally has this and can be used for whatever purpose you need it to be used for. It's kind of why it's there. So it's easily extendable and whatnot. Now with my two row items, I want to define the sizes of them. I want my first column to be twice as big as my second column. So by setting the first ratio to two and my amount ratio to one, this will take two times the size as one as the other column. It's done by proportion to each other, kind of like how most column ratios are set up. So that's the thing. And right now you have to manually make the column ratios match the header row items in terms of count. But ideally once with some more editor customization, I can make it so if you add a header row item, it will match the column ratios or vice versa. So, or maybe someone else will assist with that on GitHub. That's why I'm open sourcing this, so yeah. That said, now here's our table list. And right now you can't add table list items in the editor, you have to do it through Blueprint. And that's just simply not enough dev time, but this will be a feature in the future. And if I hit play, you'll see that I have a slightly misplaced but functional table view with no items here. And let's go ahead and fix that placement by making it match, because that type of stuff bugs me. This video is going to be much longer than it needs to be because I keep tangenting and because I want my but I want everything to be aligned. I'm also going to create a sentence here that will kind of describe what fruit you have selected to showcase that things are happening and give a reason for all the events to bind. I ate X things. There we go. I ate X things. And I'm going to try to remove the animation panel and make it smaller so you can see more, so I can zoom in more. A little bit. I think that helps. All right. So now with this, we can start setting up our events. Because right now, if we play our game here or our menu, you see that nothing really does anything at all. No events are bound. And which brings me to the next section of why this plugin is awesome and why I prefer it over Epic's assign an event to every button type of system. So every widget list has on the bottom right of the details pane here uh, three events that you can set up. I'll collapse these so they are more higher up on the screen so you can see them better. But they have an on button pressed, an on slider value changed, and on an on radio scroller value changed. Hello, at Namus. How you doing? At Namus just joined us in the Twitch chat. So, if you hit the on button pressed, 
event here, uh, you will see that you get an event and it has an exec node and a button tag. And this event will be fired anytime a button in this widget list gets clicked on and its tag will be sent out along with it. So where is my menu here? Uh, designer. So I have three buttons here and under shell info and I have apples, oranges, bananas. So wow, I keep forgetting to go back to grapple one out. So what I can do is I can switch the name of this tag and I know my tags are going to be apples, bananas, or oranges. So apples, banana, bananas, oranges. Uh, uh. I am doing fine at Namas. Yeah, just making a YouTube video on Twitch because that's what we're doing. So, with the switch on name here, I'm going to set for now this string, the i8x thing string, which I'm going to rename to fruit so text. And I want to rename our table view to fruit table so that it's easier to see and it's not this huge ridiculous name that's annoying. So when the fruit list is pressed, I want the fruit text for now to have its text set. Set text. And I want to set this to I want to display what the button tag is. For now, this is not exactly how we're going to set it up for the finished product, but this is just to show you that when you click this button, it's going to set this text to currently just the tag that the button is. Just to show that it's working. I'll make sure that it's working. So here you go. Apples, bananas, oranges. And that's the tag being set. Pretty straightforward. You get the functionality of controlling all of these three buttons from one event and that was pretty painless whereas traditional UMG if you had three buttons you would need three separate events and yes you do have to switch them but in some cases you don't want to switch them especially if you're doing navigation where the button tag happens to be the same tag as the menu then you don't even need to switch and all your buttons will work accordingly which I'll demo that later and so yeah pretty simple now I'm going to create a dynamic bind for this text so that or a function for this text so that we can format our selected string. I'm gonna call this get fruit text. Let's get fruit text. And I'm gonna create a variable here called uh, fruit strings. And this is gonna be a collection of string or a collection of F texts, I should say. And what this does is it's going to allow me to set up, let me hide my face so you can see the details pane here. Uh, what's it saying? Yeah, this is just going to be a collection of strings that will define what we're doing with the fruit. So the apples, uh, let me pull up something here. Like I want to eat apples, I want to slip on bananas and things like that and this is just the easiest way to store them where are my sample sentences alright so the way we're going to store this text though is we're going to format it in a way so that if you have more than one of the fruit it depends on S and the amount that you have or whatever blah we'll go in there Omnidev asks does this have a page or a repo once this video is up on YouTube Omnidev I'm going to put this up on github for sure and y'all can download it I'm just making the YouTube video right now which is kind of silly because people on YouTube are gonna be really annoyed that I'm talking to people on twitch while they watch this but two for one so yeah so fruit strings um, or my fruit strings again I ate and then a placeholder for the amount Apple and a placeholder for the s because one thing I've noted is that uh, I don't think there's really a way to do plural localization for strings in Unreal yet. So you kind of have to do that yourself, which is a little annoying. And so I'm going to make sure I use words where the plural always ends on S. 
So I don't have to worry about like ES or for example, the plural of sheep, which is sheep. Unreal doesn't really support any easy mechanic that I know of currently for that type of stuff. Okay, so now we have this string here. It's I8 and then bracket zero and then apple brackets one. And this will allow me to format the string in a way uh, where I can insert stuff pretty easily. And now I need a new variable for what string I have selected. So I'm gonna make an integer here, call this selected fruit. And this again, isn't so much plugin stuff. This is just example of wiring up events. So even our fruit strings array, I can get our fruit string. Uh, this is a formatted, or this is an unformatted string. It's got these arguments in here. So first thing I want to do here is add a format text. And I'm going to add two pins because our formatted string has two arguments, zero and one. And the first is going to be the amount of fruit. And so let's grab the amount of fruit that we have selected. And the easiest way to do that is to grab our fruit options, which contains our slider. And well, um, my OBS is something weird. So in order to grab our slider from our fruit options widget list, we can go grab our get slider. And this will give you the get slider with widget tag. And I know the sliders tag is amount. So I'll put in the amount and this will grab me the slider. And then I can call get value and boom if I plug this into our text here it will retrieve whatever value the slider has selected and doing this with UMG is just default it's kind of a pain in the ass to set all this up but again doesn't really take that many nodes here and Nakmar Dev is going to sleep so uh, yeah check out that YouTube video and uh, thanks I will keep up the good work and so now that we have our amount selected, if our amount is greater than, not less than, my bad, I typed in the wrong arrow. If our amount is greater than one, I want to input an S into our string. Otherwise, I want to leave it blank. So with that, I can call a select text. Is that a thing? Select string. And so if it's greater than one, I want to append an S. If it's not, I'll leave it blank and I'll pipe this into the format string here. Ah, my nose itches a lot. Okay. So now when I hit compile and save, I can put the format text node into the return node. And now when I hit play, you'll see that the slider works and it includes the S, which is pretty cool, pretty nifty. But the buttons don't do anything yet. The buttons are still setting the tag of the text, and that's not exactly cool. So in order to fix that, we can go back to our button thing, our button event, and you can click on your widget list and click view over here. And this will bring you directly to the event. And instead of doing setting the text here, the text is automatically being calculated by our get fruit text function now. So now we can just set our selected fruit and I know apples, I think apples was zero. I think I misordered this here. I want oranges to be second and bananas to be third. So do this here and we'll set for one, two. And so with this here, this very simple setup, we'll control all three of those buttons and it will change the text accordingly. So if you hit apple, you ate an apple. If you hit banana, you slipped on a banana because why not? If you hit orange, you, you ate an orange. And if you drag the slider, you ate seven oranges, you slipped on seven bananas, you slipped on seven apples. Very, very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Now, next thing we're gonna do is set up our color so our text will change colors because that's fun. And I use that, we'll go ahead and add a, another event. And this time we'll add an event for the options list and we'll set that to on radio scroller value changed. And this is a 
This event will be called for any time a radio scroller widget gets its choice changed. So go ahead and add that here. And there's only one radio scroller, so I don't need to switch to radio scroller tag because I know it's always going to be fruit color. But the new choice tag returns whatever the new selected choice of that radio scroller is going to be. So I can switch that. And I know my choices are pretty simple. They're white, red, green, blue. And this order doesn't have to match the choices. You can structure this however you want. And what we need to do is we need to set the color of our fruit text. So we'll grab this here and we'll say set color. Set color and opacity. And instead of making more nodes, I'm going to split the struct pin and that'll allow us to set the color in here directly. So I'll set this to white. And I'm going to make four more of these. I believe this should be the right node. And I have to target the fruit text on all of them. I wish there was a way to copy paste nodes in Blueprint and keep the target set correctly. I'll wire these up to my different choices I have here. And I'll set the color. This is a really big node for just setting the color of text. Hopefully, set color and opacity will work for us. And here we go. So if uh, I set my color, when this when the color choice changes, the color gets updated on the sentence. Very easy binding for what would normally be kind of a complex task. Because usually in the UMG, you'd have to create a widget and then manually store all these choices and then manually increment, decrement indexes and then do all this stuff just to have a collection of choices. Nonetheless, bind to what one you have selected and all this other crap. And all the other things still work. Uh, everything's pretty solid. There's really no question of stability. This kind of just always works. It's just There's nothing that can go wrong kind of in that setup. Just very clean, very simple. You're done. And now next thing I want to do is when you click log, I want a box to pop up saying, are you sure you want to store what you just ate with fruit or whatever? And, and then if yes, put it in this table list. Now this might be a good example of say, you're setting video settings and you hit apply resolution. You want to be like, whoa, are you sure you want to set your resolution? It might like break your thing if it's too high or whatever. Or say if you have an inventory screen and you're destroying, like you're discarding an object, you want to box the box that says, whoa, are you sure you want to like remove that item or whatever. Or uh, say you're doing input rebinds and you want a box that says, press any key to rebind this. Um, this is kind of what this system is used for that we're setting up now. So to set this up, there uh, first we have to create an event for the button that we're clicking here. And I'll add the on button pressed. And again, for this, just like the color option, I know there's only one button in this option list, so I don't need to switch the button tag. But if there were more than one button, I could do that to know which button was clicked. And I think I could add my webcam back on now. Yeah, okay. So with this setup, with this event node here, I want to create a message box. Now creating a message box that binds to the yes or no properties is usually a really a pain in the ass thing to do in UMG as well. It's not so hard with Slate because you can easily bind events and whatnot better. But again, UMG, pain in the ass. And this makes it way simpler by having a thing in here called show message box widget. And this handles a lot of stuff for you and what it does is it takes a player because every widget needs a player and I can't really get, escape that fact so just in case you're doing split screen or something it's nice to just be able to supply that especially on consoles if you're doing that type of stuff so get owning player uh, this will pipe in here and then you need to show a message box class the plugin already automatically comes with a example widget example message box widget which looks like this black screen got some text options in here you can customize this to do whatever you want as long as you maintain the functionality in it 
uh, it sh everything should work. So with this show message widget, I'll go ahead and pipe this in here, and I want to select example message box widget. And what it does is it takes a widget info struct that for message boxes. And if we split this, you'll see that there's kind of a few options in here. Now, I really should write up a page of documentation for this, but there's some cool things in here in the fact that you can have a confirm button, like an OK or a yes button, and then you have a cancel button, which is or a cancel or no. But if this is blank, that button will not get added. So if, it's just, if there's no cancel text, it won't say cancel. So you can use it for things like, hey, you got this item, yay. And then you just click OK because there's only OK. Like there's no other action you want for that type of stuff. So for the confirm text, I'm going to hit type in, type in yes. For the cancel text, I'm going to type in no because this is a yes and no box. For the the label down here is kind of like the title of the thing so I want to name this fruit confirmation and the caption is like the message body so are you sure you want to store that fruit combination and you can pipe this to be a formatted text string or whatever you want and uh, the caption tag is kind of part of the, the caption text property it's not really needed uh, the widget info tag here, the bottom one, this is the tag for the message box widget. So if you have multiple message boxes or something like that, you can tag your message boxes so you know which message box fired what event. And I'll name this fruit confirmation. I usually keep my tags to be lowercase one word, but really as long as they're valid F names, you can put whatever you want in there. And so what this will do is this will show a message box and from this message box you can assign on button pressed and it looks a little weird but what this does is it binds this event that you have here to the yes or no buttons of the message box so you don't have to worry about how do you like structure how do you get that event flow from the message box when they hit yes or no how do you handle that well, with the assign on button pressed you handle it right here. It's immediately after the show message box. You don't have to work with event dispatchers or anything. It's all just kind of automatically set up for you. So I want to name this on fruit confirmation button pressed. And so the two buttons that could possibly happen are confirm and cancel. Again, this needs to be documented somewhere, but yeah. Maybe I'll get around to that later. Confirm and cancel. Whoa. And if confirm fires, it means I hit yes. If cancel fires, it means I hit no. Or would I hit whatever your confirm and cancel texts are. And if it's confirmed, I want to add it to my table view, which we'll do later. If it's cancel, I want it to do nothing. And when this fires, the message box is automatically going to close itself. It's going to handle everything on its own. So, yeah. Uh that's happened so let's compile save and play and I'll show you what that looks like it won't do anything yet but if I click log you'll see my message box pops up very painless very simple only took two or three nodes and if I hit yes or if I hit no it closes itself it doesn't fire anything yet but there it goes so let's add it to our table list view and show off that feature of the plugin so every table view uh, has an add table item add item okay fruit list is not what I want I guess uh, what did I call this fruit table and why is fruit oh here it is fruit table that's why you should name things properly because the other thing fruit list is a bad name for it so add table item and add table item will do essentially that it will add a row to the table to do whatever and the tag info you can tag your table item so when you click an item you know what row it is if you have a particular tagging thing for this I really don't need that but it's there for you and for item data this essentially takes a list of label and tags that you can type in 
And because our table list is two columns, it's going to expect two items in this item data list. And the two items that we're adding, well, this is going to fail to compile without this data because it needs this data. And so we'll split this and call this thing none. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it does need an item data for sure. And the item data can be done with uh, by dragging out here and calling make array. So here's a make array node. And this takes an array of widget nodes. And I know I want two because of two columns. And the first one I want is the the color and the name of the fruit I have selected. So with that, I'm going to add a new string. Um, and this will store basically whatever the last selected fruit was. There are other ways to do this, but this is the easiest. Selected fruit. I want this in their name. Oh, I think I changed. Uh-oh. My blueprint, I accidentally renamed two variables the same thing and it freaked out. Selected fruit name. No, I want to name my integer that. Okay. Selected fruit. Selected fruit. I mean my string. I meant to say string there. Selected fruit name. And I want this to be an F name. Yeah, that was annoying. No, I want this to be text. What am I thinking? And so first thing is when I go to this here, I'm going to set my fruit name to whatever button, whatever to label the button that we pressed. So to do that, I'm going to grab our fruit list and we can get the button that was clicked by doing get button widget with tag and then piping the button tag from the event into here. And then from here we can call get label and this will get the label of whatever button we clicked. It's pretty simple and straightforward I think. Uh, could be reduced by one more node by making this a get button label from tag but I think that's fine. We'll call set here and so now whenever a button is clicked the label of that button will be stored in selected fruit name which means when we add it to the table view here we can just grab that ah getting text messages for some but uh, almost done here uh, so the selected fruit name we can uh, pipe this in here and to do that we're doing uh, that text message threw me off well we need to add the color so let's format some text format text and I want the color oh where's my input color and then fruit so I'm gonna put the fruit here and now I need to get the color and the color was stored in the fruit options radio scroller widget so again I can get the get radio scroller with tag and I can use the color tag because that's what I named that tag I can get the choice get selected choice label so whatever label that's currently shown pipe that in the here and then again this could be cleaned up a bit but essentially uh, this is the first item in the table view it's a little complex but that's because I wanted to format this text this way and for the amount what we can do is for fruit options get slider search for amount get the value of the slider and then just pipe that into a text node directly. So I can split this and then just shove that in here. And then with that item data, with this array of item data, plug that into here. And so on confirm, it'll grab all this data. And so right now I have a white apple. Well, let's do white five apples. Hit log. Hit yes. Well, my fruit text is missing. Let's figure that out. But you'll see it says five. So why is my fruit text broken? Label, color fruit. So that probably means my color widget is named wrong. Uh, my 
my first choice. Oh yeah, I tagged my I tagged my fruit color thing, fruit options. It was a typo. But now I'm not with my correct tag. This should work. If I have a white apple, I have white one. Where's my fruit? Ah, so the problem is right now the selected fruit string starts empty. Hello, in dev girl, how you doing? Thanks for following. Um, yeah, so let me set the default string to my selected fruit name to apples so that, you know, it's there. <laughs> there we go. So if you don't click any buttons, the default name is apples, as it should be. White apples. If I hit bananas, set it to five or seven bananas, make it red, I should have seven red bananas. Yay! If I spam this, you'll see that the table list automatically supports scrolling, so you can scroll up and down. No effort on your end, it just works. Now the headers don't sort or anything, maybe that'll come in with a later feature, but yeah, that's pretty nifty. Now the next thing I want to show is something, or the last thing I'm going to show, which will take a little bit of a while as well, with this plugin, is something called the panel switcher. And Epic has a default panel switcher built in, but it's it works based off indices or indexes. And I wanted one that's worked off of F name tags, as well as I wanted a switcher that would destroy its children and rebuild them when the panel opens. So when you close a panel and open a panel or close a widget and open a widget, it's reconstructing that so that that widget's not always in memory. Also, I wanted to be able to assume that when a panel is opened, its constructor is ran, which the other panel widget doesn't do. Also, I also ran into the, some issues with the panel widget working weirdly on different platforms when I used the built-in one. So I made my own, and it doesn't seem to have the same problems. Um, before we get into that, let's answer this question. Omni Game Dev asks, uh, have you ever tried to insert a widget BP in a slate code in C++? Is this even possible? I have not tried inserting a blueprint widget into Slate. I don't want to ever try that, but I can see why that'd be useful. Um, but no, sorry, I have no idea if that's possible. I don't think it would be, but there is a C++ function called take widget on UMG widgets, which returns the Slate widget of a UMG widget. You could use that to put into a slate widget then you have to create the umg widget in code which again you can't do. i would say yes it is possible it's not convenient but it is possible so yeah um yeah now with that said let's go back to the panel switching thing here so the panel switcher i'm going to create another set of buttons to drive it now i'm not going to make the oh god damn it sometimes when you copy paste I swear it breaks shit compile okay where is my where is my list okay well I broke my widget list by trying to copy paste it that seems to be a bug in the most recent version of Unreal which is highly annoying Let's recreate that real fast. Uh, y256. 256. It's easy to recreate because of this widget list functionality. Yay! So we had three buttons. Apples, apples. Button. I think I did banana second, but it doesn't matter because it's all based on tagging it will work in any order and let's re-add our button list here and let's find the graph where it's broken just like this add this here switch to this 
get fruit list. That's because our thing is no longer called fruit list. Fruit list. Oh, don't you crash, UMG. Uh-oh. Okay, so there's a fun crash where if you delete a widget and then name a new widget, the same as the old widget, even though that widget is no longer missing, but there's still an event associated with that widget, the editor will crash. And I don't know why. I haven't looked into it. But uh, UMG is still not perfect. And that's not a plugin issue. That is a epic built-in issue. <laughs> so, yeah. You should, uh, if you want that fixed, go on the forums or the answer hub and ask them to fix it so I'm not the only one. And how much work did we lose? Fantastic. Uh, demo menu. Well, I have to recreate this damn button again. But it looks like most of our event logic is still here. So, let's delete this. Delete the fruit list reference. Example widget list. Bring it back here. Size it to what we want. Oops. <laughs> the folder name on my desktop. Uh, which one? Because I have quite a few folders that are awesomely named. Uh, 150. The list button. Apples. Again, this is another reason why I created this functionality plugin. It's because every time UMG crashed when I was doing something simple, it would cause tons of work to need to be redone. And now when I have to redo work, it's pretty trivial because it's just simple. I want to name it fruit list again. Fruit list. Okay, we didn't crash this time, thankfully. All right, let's add this event here. And let's rehook up our tag here and our tag over here. And then let's drag this here, get, boom, compile. All right, so now we're compiling, save. And let's test our menu again. Oh yeah, Cordell's fucking shit, yep. That's his shit in that folder, all right. And now this YouTube has to be rated R, but whatever. All right, so we need to override with our game mode, make sure our menu still loads. Here we go, our menu. And now everything's still functional. Rebuilt that nav li list three times now. Everything still works, maybe. Uh, looks like we're missing something from that crash. Selected fruit name, search tag button tag. Apples, let's go to our, oh yeah, this broke. This totally broke. So, when you pipe in a, a make array here, one important thing to note, again, this is an issue with Epic stuff, do not split the array pins on make array. Just do not split those pins. It will cause some bad things to happen. It's best to make whatever structure you have in there. I know it creates a lot more nodes, but there's an issue with Epic's make array pins where it will convert your, exist, your old data into into uh, pins of the same struct type, if that makes any sense. And that will cause it to basically break when it gets reloaded. So it'll be fine until you reload the class through those make pin and then those make pins will break. What is the difference between, uh, oh God, question here. Mr. Fun Sox says, what is the difference between Unity and Unreal? What makes one better or worse than the other? I wanna say currently Unity has prototype time on mobile games very well done unreal is pretty big and takes a lot of work to get some mobile stuff going so i wouldn't say unity is better for that uh, unity is great for c sharp people <laughs> but if you're not a c sharp person and you're not a mobile prototyper i want to say unreal is better in every way just because open source code and everything 
gets can be iterated better. Things are generally more functional. The render is a lot more prettier. But if you just like slapping code together and putting pieces together, I think Unity is kind of where you're at. So there's that. I am biased, though. I've been using Unreal for about five years now, both Unreal 3 and Unreal 4. So probably not the right one to ask. I hope Unreal gets even better for mobile. Unreal has now something called Paper 2D, which is getting a lot better. Uh, Unreal's multiplayer physics is not good. So if you have a good multiplayer physics solution for Unity and your game is multiplayer physics based, then go to Unity. But if it's single player physics, Unreal's pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, let's let's test our thing now so add an item yep there we go and again even though we're just doing apples and oranges here this could be a server list this could be inventory settings this could be options video settings uh, whatever it could be anything that you want and all right so again going back to panel switching which is what I want to show earlier because it's the next cool thing in the plugin but I got stopped because the widget list crash so oh which no, not the widget list crash the renaming a widget to a deleted widget with an event for that widget still exist crash which is a long name for that so let's add a panel switcher uh, example panel switcher is where that stuff lives so I call it the full panel widget switcher because it swaps out the entire panel with something else <laughs> I could probably have a better name but I didn't want it to conflict with the epic panel switcher as well and I'm making sure these are aligned right I'm not going to copy paste this widget because we learned that that doesn't work so I'll drag a new widget new widget list 300 150 oh sorry this is 256 now say you have this panel, full panel menu switcher thing it can be used for switching out the entire screen it can be used for switching pages of inventory it can be used for switching option pages like if you want your video settings and your audio settings on different pages it can be used for any time you want to switch one widget with another it can be used for like class selection customized crap anything really uh, if you need to switch one panel with another this will do it uh, I'm just gonna call this panel switcher demo and I'm gonna call this widget list panel switcher nav uh, say you have a restaurant and you have multiple pages of your menu and you want people to switch to that this can work with that too and that's the example I'm going with now I'm gonna create uh, two menus well, I'm not gonna create them I'm just going to use ones I already made it's just so I can get done with this faster because you guys don't really need to see how the other ones are made really because we've already made this full widget so the first button is gonna be dog menu the second one's gonna be cat menu. I'm gonna call the tag for this dog menu. Cat menu. And then I'm gonna have a third button for blank to show you that if you want to empty it out, you just right now the best way is just to add a blank menu. But you can also just close the panel as well. And in order to make these buttons open up different panels here. If you name the button tags the same as your menu tags, which I just did, or I'm going to be doing, uh, if you hit the on button press and you add an event, what you can do is you can bring out your panel switcher and just go to the open panel function within it, or call it, and then just tie your button tag into the panel tag, and boom, that is your menu navigation. It's two nodes, very straightforward, very simple. And I'll go ahead and save this and let's set up our menus now I'm not going to go through how to create these panel switcher menus because they're, it's just like creating any other widget however for there's some slight things you need to do and I'll open up the dog panel that I've already made now the dog panel again it's just another UMG widget I set the, or set the size by going to 
uh, preview size custom and setting it to 600 by 150 so I know it fits. And these are just text. This is just random text. And just, uh, this is a button that is my widget button. So it takes a label and a tag. But there's really nothing special going on here. The only thing that's important to know here is that when you make a panel switcher widget or a widget that's going to go into a panel switcher, make sure you reparent that blueprint to become a panel or a full panel widget. Not a full panel switcher widget. That switches things. You just a regular full panel widget. And then another thing is if you want to change the the parent or what I mean, if you want to whoa can't save this sorry i must have this open somewhere else um let me close something real quick and save this so if you're say in the options menu and you want to go back to the main menu every panel switcher widget once you reparent your blueprint has a variable or a property called parent switcher widget and this is just basically the switcher widget that it's in so by calling open panel on it, you can cause your panel to swap out to another panel, which is really useful for a back button. And I'll show you that case here with uh, this panel setup. And so uh, in addition to the dogs panel, I have a cats panel, which is set up exactly the same way. Sorry, I just realized that I accidentally tied these two together. Uh, I want the parent menu to go to a menu called blank so this will just open up the blank menu on the parent again that will make sense in a bit and if I hit play I have a broken cat menu button let's figure out why that is that's because I forgot to label my cats uh, button see nothing really goes wrong with just user error really when it comes to this stuff and another thing to note is the panel infos. You gotta set the panel infos, and you can have an initial panel. I want the initial panel to be blank. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add a blank panel, and the blank panel widget is essentially just a full panel widget that has nothing in it. It's sized appropriately, but it has nothing in it, so it's blank. And I will tag this panel blank, and then I'll add another panel, and all your panel classes will show up under any panel widget panel widget switcher such as the cat panel and the dog panel I'll add the cat panel on I'll, I'll tag it cat menu I'll add another panel call uh, that calls from the dog panel class and I'll name this dog menu and yeah so let's it compile and because these buttons are told to open panels on this widget with those tags this should just work the initial panel is blank, so you don't see anything, but if I hit cats menu, you'll see that it creates and inserts the cats panel widget into this widget for you by, all by itself. And if you hit hide menu, it's going to tell the parent of this panel, which is the panel switcher, to go back to the blank menu. And there you go. So that sub panels can have navigation to the parents and vice versa. So if I want to open the dog menu when the cats are open, uh, just hit dogs and the panel switcher will automatically close the cats menu, remove it, and insert the dog menu on top of it. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. It makes menu navigation, setting up multiple menus and multiple pages pretty painless. You don't have to worry about menu state navigation or anything. It just all kind of works. And yeah. Now the very last thing I'm going to show about all this stuff is how easy it is to switch out widgets for different widgets and theme things. I'm going to theme the button and by theme I mean just change the color of it. So right now we're using the example button widget from the plugin. If I copy this by dragging it in my content browser to a new folder and copy, I want to rename this demo button widget skinned because why not? And I'll open up this widget and say I'm tired of this gray. I don't like this gray at all. I can change the color to red. And that won't do anything because I forgot this takes a slate style or some sort. So in the style here, I'll set style. Yeah. Style property. Blah. I'll change the tint to red. And when it's hovered over, I will change the tint to green because, okay. 
I'll compile it, save it. Now you won't notice your changes immediately uh, because this is a brand new widget. But so in order to change to this widget, you're going to have to change your widget list to reference it. So for this here, this widget list here, I'm going to go to my info category. And where I choose button class, I'm going to choose demo button widget skinned. And so every button this widget list creates will now use my new button class for this widget list. So if I hit play, you'll see that I now have my red buttons and I didn't have to go in and skin all these different buttons and a bunch of other stuff. It just all kind of works. It's uh, pretty simple. You don't have to mess with too many slate widget styles. You just mess with it once and it all just works. And all the functionality is still there as long as you don't change functionality of the button or if you do make sure it works it's all pretty nice and these are still referencing the example button class but if I swap those out those will be the same but once you have your class assigned here say if like oh you think that green is too strong on hover you can change it to a purple because why not and now, now that change will automatically propagate so now all these as long as you're using that right class, any changes you make to that class will change everything that uses that class. So it helps with skinning your UI dramatically because you, as long as you're just referencing the right class, you're fine. And if you don't, you don't have to worry about what if I want to use this style here or that style there, you can just create two different classes and time to go or separate them or whatever, call them however you want. And every widget can be skinned that way. Uh, you just has to be called the right way. For example, the the slider here, or what was it? Not the slider. Well, the slider too. But if I want to change the button widget for the log button to be my new widget, and I want to create a new slider theme, I just pull from the example slider, which is example slider widget. Copy it somewhere and rename it so it's easier to find demo slider skinned I should probably name that slider widget skin for consistency uh, so this is how the widget is set up it's kind of like set vertically centered because that's just the way I made this one but really you can set up however you want and I'm gonna make this label I don't know uh, blue let's make it a cyan and yeah so if I hit save, if I, I can theme the slider, I can do whatever I want here. But now in my demo menu, I'm going to choose my new demo skinned slider widget. And you'll see that it's now skinned with very minimal effort. And everything's still functional, everything's great. So there's some other smaller features that I'm not going to cover in the plugin, but that's basically the gist of it and if I rehearsed that and talked about it better I probably could explain that in a more concise manner but yeah making it live because why not and so I'm going to stop the recording now and stop the stream throw this up on YouTube and yeah then after that I will put this up on GitHub and there'll be a forum post on the UV4 forums and uh, you can get it from there so I'll link you to my GitHub right now. Again, this isn't up yet, but it will be up within the next four hours. And it requires an engine source build at the moment. For when 4.7 is released, I will release a build for it. But until then, yeah. So here's my GitHub. It's uh, just github.com slash aller. And you'll see it pop up here somewhere. So... Yeah, cool. And cheers, y'all.